Hi there guys, my name's George, I'm a professional chef. I'm here today to make the perfect Christmas dinner for you, your friends and your flatmates. It's super easy to do, it's nice and cheap and the best part is you can prep most of it the day before. Right, shall we get started? First things first, we'll start with the chicken. Here we've got a few ingredients. Obviously we've got the chicken, we've got some carrots, red onion, some thyme, garlic and butter. What we're gonna do is just chop a bit of the veg because there's gonna be some vegetables underneath the chicken and there's gonna be a red onion inside the chicken. So we'll start with that. And all you need to do is just halve it, halve it again, leave them to one side. And then we'll go on to the carrots. These aren't actually gonna be eaten, but they're gonna be part of your stock. So you can just roughly chop them. That's your uh, veg all chopped, we'll just give the board a wipe. We're gonna make a garlic butter to stuff the chicken. This basically makes sure the chicken's gonna stay nice and juicy. So what we'll do is we'll just crush the garlic to remove the skin. Right, so now the garlic is crushed, we're just gonna chop it, try and make it nice and small. And then once you've got your garlic like this, just pass through it a couple of times with your knife. Make sure you keep your fingers on top of the knife so you don't risk cut yourself. Right now, so now our garlic's chopped. We're just going to grab a bowl and a spoon and then we'll add some butter. Make sure the butter's nice and soft, so just leave it out in your kitchen for a bit before you do this. Add your garlic and then add your thyme. You can also use parsley or rosemary, any sort of herb really will do. You only need a bit of a sprinkle of the herbs, not too much. And then grab your spoon, incorporate it all together, make sure it's nice and soft. Because we're going to be spreading this underneath the uh, chicken skin. And there's your butter. I'm just going to give this chopping board a wipe and then we'll get onto the chicken. So grab the chicken. Now what we want to do is get some of this veg and we're going to stuff it underneath the chicken and the rest is going to go on the tray underneath the chicken so the chicken's raised up and it's not touching the tray. The reason for this is, is so that heat can get underneath and all around the chicken, not just on top. What we're also going to do is season the inside of the chicken before we stuff the vegetables in. Let's make sure the whole chicken's seasoned from the inside and the outside. Grab some salt and we'll pull that in and then we'll grab our Onion, and pop them in. You can leave the skin on, it doesn't matter, we're not going to be eating them. Next, this is where it gets a bit visual. <laughs> so, we have the chicken here, and you can see the skin there. And what you want to do is get your hand, and just push underneath the skin, and separate it from the chicken. It should come apart quite easily, and try not to break the skin. So now the skin's quite loose, and come apart from the chicken breast, we can get the butter and stuff it in. And then on top, you can massage the chicken through. That'll do, I think. Okay, now that I'm covered in butter, I'm gonna go wash my hands. But now we're gonna get the vegetables in the pan. We'll season the chicken, chicken on top, and then in the oven. Okay, I'm seasoning the chicken with salt now, all over, and then we'll get our vegetables. In, try and group them together, and then we'll place our chicken on top of the vegetables and leave there. Now, this can go into the oven for about an hour and a half, hour 20 minutes at 190 degrees Celsius. When you get it out, if you grab a skewer and you poke it into the thickest part of the breast and pull it out, the juice should run clear and that shows that your chicken's cooked. So now I'm gonna move on to the mashed potato. Very simple. I've got a pan here, some peeled potatoes. I'm just gonna chop these a little bit into the pan with some cold water onto boil. I'm going to cut them into basically like golf ball size shapes, maybe a bit bigger. You don't want too big, or you don't want too small. Now we'll get the uh, potatoes, put them in some cold water. We'll take these over to the hob and put them on a medium high heat. Okay, so I've drained the potatoes and put them back in the pan. It's good to let them dry out for a bit, so I've left them for about 10 minutes in the drainer and then I've put them back in. What we're going to do now is add some butter, some salt and a little bit of English mustard and then mash it all together. So butter. It's quite a large knob of butter, a good pinch of salt, and just a small teaspoon of mustard because it's quite strong. So probably about half a teaspoon. And then yeah, just go to town with a masher. No real technique to this, I don't think. You just keep mashing away until you've got the consistency you like. If you like to have it quite lumpy, that's fine, do that. If you like it smoother, then just keep mashing for longer. Give it a stir every so often, tap down the mashed potato. So it's getting quite smooth now. Give it one last stir. And there's mashed potato. We'll just get a spoon out to check the consistency. There we are. Nice, soft, fluffy mashed potato. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our veg. We've got some carrots. I'm going to chop 
and quarter. Got some parsnips I've already quartered. Uh, we've got some honey and mustard we're going to make a little uh, dressing out of. Some salt, we're going to use some oil and obviously the bowls for the honey and mustard. So I'm just going to top and tail these carrots and then quarter them. So just watch your fingers. Put your fingers either side of the carrot and then the knife through the middle and just slice down. When you're chopping the carrots, it's best to put the flat side down and slice through them. Make sure they don't move around. So the oven's preheated 180 degrees. We're just going to do our dressing and pour over the top and we'll go in the oven 180 degrees, 15 minutes. Put in the bowl. So we've got some English mustard here. You could use whole grain mustard or Dijon if you liked. You don't need a lot of that because it is quite strong. And just some honey. Two tablespoons of honey to one teaspoon of English mustard. Just give that a stir. Uh, so we're going to grab some oil. I'm going to oil the veg, then the dressing, then salt, and then in the oven. Uh, pour the oil in out of this comically large bottle of oil. Give that a shake. And then the dressing. And then just some salt. A good shake. Okay, so now the carrots and parsnips go in the oven, 180 degrees for about 15 minutes. It's time to check on the veg. It's been in there for about 15 minutes. Let's see if it's done. And there we are. Our roast veg, a little bit of char, which is nice, adds to flavour, but it's nice and soft on the inside. Ready to eat. Okay, now we'll move on to the ever so important Brussels sprouts. What we need to do is just trim them a little bit get rid of the outer layers and the roots. So we're just going to do that for a few of them. What you do is you take the Brussels sprout, slice off the end, and then peel away the outer layers. Right, so now you take the Brussels sprouts, and we're going to halve them, and then quarter them. And pop them in a colander, because we'll give them a quick wash. And we'll just keep doing that until we've got a few. So we're going to take the Brussels sprouts and just give them a quick wash to get any little bits of dirt off them. So now I'm going to take the Brussels sprouts over to the frying pan. We're just going to fry them in some oil, a bit of salt and pepper, and just so they get a nice colour on them and they'll still have a little bit of crunch. So just add some oil and we'll just wait for that to heat up. Spread the oil around. Just it down a little bit. You just want it like a medium heat. And then we add some salt. And we add some pepper. And then you just let that cook for a bit uh, until it's got some colour and uh, slightly softer. It won't take too long, it should be about five or six minutes. Okay, so I'm going to go grab the chicken, we're going to make our gravy. So we'll take the chicken out and let that rest on the board. Just make sure we get all the juices. What we're going to do is now strain this with veg into a pan and make the gravy from the juices with the chicken. Okay, so we'll take this, we can remove some of the veg and then we'll pour it through a sieve into a pan. Just take these, and you want to sort of squeeze what's ever in them back into the pan. I'll we'll grab this and pour it in here. And then we're going to take this juice over to the stove, add some flavourings like red wine um, and some beef stock, and then we'll add uh, some flour and butter to thicken it. In this bowl we have butter and flour, about equal measurements of both, and we're going to stir them together to add to the gravy. Probably not going to use all of this but it's good to make more than you need, because then if you like it thicker, you can add more, but you can add it bit by bit until you've got the consistency of gravy that you would like. Okay, let's turn the heat on. So we've got a little bit of red wine, unnamed brand. Just half a glass. Then we've got a beef stock cube. Push that in. Uh, and then we're gonna top it up with some water and let that boil. Let's give that a quick stir of a whisk. What we need to do now is just strain some of the fat off the top. So just give the top the fat off. Give that a stir. Then what we're going to do is just add some of this flour and butter mix. Whisk that in. And just do it bit by bit until it thickens. There we are. So that's the gravy, nice and thick, and ready to go. That's made from the chicken juices, beef stock, uh, red wine, and butter and flour at the end, just thicken it. 
So chicken's been in the oven for about an hour and 20 minutes. What we're gonna do is take it out and just let it rest. Uh, this is to make sure the chicken gets extra juicy. So now we're gonna let it rest for about 15 to 20 minutes. This lets the uh, juices just settle within the chicken. So when you slice, the juices are all still there. I'm just gonna now slice the chicken. There's two ways you can go about this. One way to do it is just to get rid of the wings because they kind of get in the way. Just rip them off and have them as a little treat later. And then cut here to separate the thigh and leg. You can see all the juices there. And what you can do is just take your breast, slices like that. There you have three slices, a bit of skin on the back side. Another way to do it, obviously you remove the wing again on this side, and then you can slice, you feel the root bone here, slice all the way down, and then come across, and then you've got the chicken breast there, and you can just go down like that. Okay, so we have long slices like that, or a whole breast chopped out, and little cuts. You can see it's all really nice and juicy. It should be really tasty. What we'll do now is we'll get the plate, and we'll create our Christmas dinner. Okay, now we're gonna put our Christmas dinner together. Obviously, this is all personal preference, but I'm gonna start with the mashed potato. So start the mashed potato, then we'll get our carrots and parsnips, our Brussels sprouts, then our chicken. Nice thick gravy. And there we are, our Christmas dinner. Obviously, this is just your bare bones Christmas dinner, just your meat, your veg, and your potatoes. Obviously, there's many more things you can have on your dinner, such as bread sauce, cranberry sauce, Yorkshire pudding, stuffing, pigs in blankets. The list goes on and on, but I just want to do the basics here, and then you guys can make the rest. So there we are, super easy and tasty Christmas dinner. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments if you're going to make it yourselves. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. We'll see you next time. Merry Christmas.